I go to the piano, I sit down, I usually love composing on the piano, at the piano, and then I might actually imagine what that event looks like inside my, my, uh, my memory, my imagination, my brain, and I think about what I see, what I smell, and I eventually get to what I actually hear. And when that happens, I hear music. Really all of my life I've learned how to transfer what was in my um, crazy memory and imagination onto ink on paper. And that's, uh, that's where the craft of composing comes in. When I was making a transition uh, um, from the Franciscans to the Paulists, I was really attracted to their, um, to their willingness to use my creativity to allow me to explore my varied gifts that I, I felt like I needed to explore, uh, areas in music and liturgy. And they were really um, open to supporting my, my vision of ministry, my, um, my, uh, my need to compose more as a, as, a, as a legitimate pastoral ministry full time. And they also supported my doctoral studies to pursue those areas. So I, I, I found them to be a community that would be able to, to, um, to utilize all the different tools that each of us uh, come with, you know, and, and to reach into each community and pastoral situation. Um, I'm also teaching academically uh, at Santa Clara University. I teach liturgy, culture, um, in some ways sociology and music, um, all of those areas, the sacraments. But then I'm also traveling two or three times a month. I'm traveling all over the country, all over the world. But what I love about it is that um, I think each of those ministries activate another part of my brain. And I want to believe they're all interconnected. Since I obtained my PhD <laughs> a few years ago, um, I've been invited to do these um, international gigs per se. And I, of course, I love it because I love culture. Philippines, Singapore a few times, Hong Kong, Abu Dhabi, Dubai. When I began to compose music uh, for Oregon Catholic Press back in the early 90s, I wanted to make um, Asian liturgical music a little bit more uh, usable, or at least in mainstream U.S. culture. I rediscovered the fact that many Asian cultures, especially East Asian cultures, have pentatonic melodies. So, uh, so out of that, out of that uh, studying, I, I began to write this song, Many and Great. Many and Great is one of my favorites because um, that, that became, I think that became um, known, to, or at least uh, it's, arg it's arguable, but that, was, uh, that became one of the first uh, Asian uh, pentatonic liturgical songs that became popular in mainstream U.S. culture. Moments like that when inspiration strikes without me knowing it, uh, when it's very spontaneous, those are usually my most profound spiritual moments, and um, so I kind of look back in gratitude. <laughs>